Alright, welcome to my first Escape from Tarkov video, and hopefully the first in a series of videos wherein I show you different angles that you can hold in Tarkov if you're a dirty little camper. I am a dirty little camper. I play as a rat. That is what I do in Tarkov. I'm not, I, I, I mean, I occasionally I'm a Chad, you know, whenever I know that the odds are stacked in my favor, or late in the white whenever I've got RPKs and forward armor and all that kind of crap, but this is how I play. I play, I'm the guy that sits in the bush scared to death with a gun with high pin rounds, and nothing less. I have over the years developed strategies for every map where I will go in with some type of really high damaging, really cheap weapon, and just sit and collect player and scav kills to try to get their loot. The first one we're going to be looking at is the factory L hallway hold. L hallway is a position in the basement level of the factory where you can sit and with very little exposure to possible enemy fire, you can sit in one spot and shoot at the scavs, shoot at the players, and over the course of the entire raid, and we do stay for the entire raid, you will accumulate 12, 14, 16 kills and get you a very wide variety of loot from the loot pool to choose from. Joining me in this video will be Good Life TV from Mixer, a great friend of mine and a Tarkov brother. I've been playing with him for quite a while, met him through... Uh, Veritas's Discord, I believe it was. Go look him up on Mixer. Great guy, great personality, and really, really, really good teammate. So I hope you learned something during the course of this video. If this is your playstyle, you'll learn something, hopefully. If this is not your playstyle and you're the Chad that goes running around up in Skybridge and Factory and kills absolutely everybody, except me, of course, then you're gonna hate me, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. I'm doing the best I can with the admittedly very low skill that I have, so please, please do not hate me! Okay. Alright, so we'll see when DK and I spawn in here that our first spawn location for this session was Gate 3, which is probably the worst spawn you can get when trying to go to this location, but it's good because it can kind of give you a general idea of what I'm talking about whenever I say holding L Hallway. L Hallway is an area in the basement that is one of the tunnels that's closer to the seller's extract rather than Gate 0. And it's a really good position. It's got some very good angles, and it's really secluded. So here we are spawning gate 3 and immediately booking towards it. There's a scav that for some reason runs off to the left of us. And we stop thinking it's a player and killing him. But there's no way that could have been a player as, well, no players have a spawn there. So we jump over this fence and down into the oil pit, take a little bit of leg damage, and realize that there's a player nearby... And it's because he spawned in El Hallway. El Hallway actually has a spawn. A Pardon me as I whiff so many of my shots. Okay. But El Hallway actually has a spawn in it, so if you spawn anywhere other than the El Hallway spawn, you've got to be vigilant as you approach that position because you can deal with this situation and not be nearly as lucky as I was. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys spawn there, and I've been killed from that position a lot just trying to get to that hallway. So be extra careful as opposed to how we were behaving just then. Whenever we get up here into L Hallway, as a matter of fact, this right here where I'm walking through now is where that player spawned. There's also a spawn in this hallway where this pistoling had spawned before we got there. Um, I'm not quite sure where the hallway spawn is here, but, I mean, that was really quick. That pistoling could have... The pistoling could have run all the way from Forklift. There's a spawn down there as well. So, he may have, may have originated from there, may have actually spawned down here. I'm not quite sure. Alright, so taking a look down my hallway, the, the position I'm standing in now is called Box. We call that Box because there's this big square of dead space that the hallway wraps around right here to my right. And whenever you're holding Box, you want to stand in this position so that you can get a clear angle all the way down the hallway towards the barrels at the end of the hallway where it turns left to go to cellars. Now there's players that could spawn down there, there's player scavs that could actually spawn in the middle of the hallway during the round, so... You may actually see people just materialize in front of you. I've killed so many player scavs as soon as their feet hit the ground because of this angle. And it's it's sad, and I don't like killing people right at their spawn, but they kind of got in the way, so collateral damage. Anyway, the doorway I'm holding right there, that is the hallway going up the ramp back onto the first floor of the factory by the pumping station. And that, whenever you're holding this position, is your biggest threat. In this situation, I am using an inferior site... Okay, allow my yeah, allow myself to go back into L hallway and heal up. I got shot in the arm by that stupid pistol, and 
have to repair myself. If you decide to hold this position solo, it is entirely possible, but this is where you need to stand. You need to actually stand in the L of this L hallway hold, because that way you only have two angles to watch. When you're standing in box, you have three angles to watch. You have the one to your right, and then you have the doorway going up to the first floor, and then you have the hallway all the way at the other end of your hallway. And all you got to do is just peek really quick down there, and then peek really quick back the other direction whenever you hold this position. Alright, so back in box. Whenever I'm in this position, this is always the position I play whenever I'm with good life. I don't really have to watch to my right that much. Occasionally I'll look just in case I have been away from the area for a while. Because if somebody gets back here where I just looked, you can, you can actually be pretty threatened by them, especially if they have a grenade. They can sit in that position the entire raid, and anybody sitting in boxes essentially pinned there. You will be pinned right here because they may be peeking an angle. Uh, they may believe that you've got them pinned, so they may be less aggressive. But I've been killed by somebody being in there quite a few times. And that's why you want to watch that left doorway going up to the first floor a little more closely than the angle I'm currently holding. And whenever somebody crosses from left to right, we call that crossing the T. And whenever you have your T crossed, you've got to pay more attention to that than any other position so that you can get the closest threat out quickly. Normally for this position, I like to have a wider reflex sight. You don't want to use a scope. I've, I, I say that because I've been killed in this position every time I've used a scope. Use a larger reflex sight so that you can see all the way down this hallway while also not having the frame of your scope. Uh, reflex site blocking the left doorway so that you'll have a little more time to react and you can see here take a look down DK's hallway he's only gotten one this raid was not very profitable and you will see in the end of this raid why but you normally will have a stack of bodies in either one of the two hallways either box or hill hallway and you don't start looting until the very end as you can see DK or uh, good life is looting the body behind me I'm standing watch to make sure that you know player scavs don't come around or AI scavs don't come around and shoot him while he's trying to loot. So here we are progressing to gate zero thinking, okay, well, all the scavs have been killed or they just didn't come this direction, so let's go ahead and leave. And that's when we realize that somebody else had been killing scavs in a different location. And we do hear him walking around up here and we'll kill him in just a second. But this is an uh, issue you may face whenever you're holding this position. Other people can draw the scavs in other directions. All right, that's a that, that's a player that's reloading. Player survived, went up to the right towards gate zero. Last. I got the angle. Oh, f I did. Alright, that player's still an issue. I'm checking this side. Go ahead. Okay, this is where all the scavs are. But you'll see in just a second an example of the kind of loot you can get from doing this type of raid. Yeah, actually. What did I say? I've gotten several graphics cards while doing these. And I'm having issues with my gamma. But it, there's so many different things you can get out of the scavs pockets that spawn. You can get the key cards. You can get the graphics cards. You can get stims. Uh, you can get rare barter items. They're, the factory scavs are nice for loot. And, I mean, I don't know if their loot pool is any different from the loot pool of the scavs of any other map. But I guess just because we do them in such large numbers and they're so easily accessible on this map, so concentrated in such a small space, that we just collect more and happen to see more. I definitely recommend this type of raid for anybody that is trying to get kills or just trying to get money back. It's not safe, no raid in Tarkov ever is, but it's pretty safe, it's decently safe. That angle that we hold is pretty good. Wouldn't say it's the absolute best angle in this entire factory, but it's the best for a two-man, by far. Alright, so satisfied with the loot we've gathered from this spot, we proceed towards the extract. We never extract gate 3, ever, for any reason. Uh, Cellars is usually the extract that we go to whenever we are holding that position because it's literally straight down the hallway, but we wanted to come this way as we were leaving because we'd heard the fire from this direction and wanted to know if we could at least get involved in some type of fight before we left. 
But if you're holding this position, I strongly suggest getting the factory exit key because you'll have an extract readily available right down there in the hallway with you at sellers and filling sellers. You can always come here, but going gate three, if you have played Tarkov for any period of time and have ever played factory, you'll know that extract campers are a serious issue at gate three because it is the only extract you can get to without a key. So you're going to, Go play the entire raid and get so much loot from the scavs and oh my goodness if i could just get out all this money will be mine and then you're killed by one or two or three dudes that are camping in gate three that's never fun so just try to get the factory exit key so that you can do this it makes things so much easier and you'll wind up with so much more loot in the end of the day okay so that previous match i showed you the logistics of how to get to the l hallway and the proper angles to look at while you're holding box so now i'm going to go in we're going to hold box again and this in this raid we actually got a decent stack of bodies so I'll show you what this this type of hold is supposed to give you it's supposed to give you a lot of scavs a lot of weapons a lot of pockets and bags to look through for the good rare items that can spawn in scavs and we spawn in glass hallway which is what we call the hallway just outside of gate one i guess this is and it's got one of the positions that you need it's got both positions for the mechanics farming part one quest we drop down into the cellars being wary of the hallway down towards forklift because a player can come down those stairs that you see right there to the right and have been killed there quite a few times coming down here it's unfortunate that you can have a couple players spawning so close together but with factory i guess there's not a whole lot of options all right so now that we get down here in the cellars we are being very careful of this hallway because a player is either spawning in forklift and jumping into the hole as well or just spawning down here um Luckily, we did not have anybody spawn L hallway, so we did not have to fight, but you can see we're clearing it. Did not have to fight to get this back, and here I am holding the L hallway position. Whenever you're in this position, you can watch straight back there towards that tank. You can have people come from the left as this weird AI scab just ran at me. Uh, <laughs> it was AI. I, it wasn't a player being weird. But I'll get into the specifics of holding that angle in the next clip. So here I want to show you an example of me being complacent and putting myself in danger. I've got peas I decided to eat for whatever reason. I was not paying attention to the hallway, and someone crossed my T without me knowing. Whoa, I got a player with me. It got pretty scary. I mean, I lost an arm. That was all there was to it. But there you see a Mosin player crossing the T. This is the player that we killed in the first raid. Uh, Misha, Ace, if you are... For some reason, able to ever see this video, I'm sorry for killing you four times, dude. I feel bad about it. Uh, doesn't mean I left you your Mosin. I, I did need those for my Jaeger quests as well. I know you were probably doing the mission where you've got to kill players within 15 meters with a Mosin, so of course you'd come factory. But I, I, I feel bad about it. I definitely not being sarcastic here. I don't, uh, I don't like killing people over and over and over again because and only because I have better gear. You messed me up pretty bad both times that we saw each other. Well, all four times that we saw each other. So, you uh, you probably would have beaten me if you would have had a decent gun, buddy. And I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right, so here I am healing my arm up after Misha screwed me up, and you can see good life here holding his angle and killing scavs as they come down the hallway. For some reason here they were running. They normally don't do that. But here he was able to amass quite a few scavs in a very short amount of time. And in a second, I'll get on into the fun as well because he's got to reload and we still heard them running. So here I am holding this position. They will always, almost always come from the left. There's a set of stairs to the left that they can climb down and get to you. And that's usually where you'll get them. And you saw we had a nice stack of bodies. All right, so in this situation, I can hear a player is up and to my left. It's a player scav running around. So I take out Misha's Mosin and start firing a couple shots to draw him down here. You're going to need to try and grab a secondary weapon at some point in the raid. I know I say don't loot until the end of the raid, but you know, it, it doesn't take you a couple seconds to grab a gun off of somebody. Grab a gun so that you can make noise. That's the only reason. You just need a noisemaker that will not tear into your primary gun's ammo. If you have two other weapons besides your primary, that's even better because you could fire both guns differently and make it sound like there's a gunfight and everybody will want to come down and try and get you. But in this situation, this player scav comes down. Holds that angle right there, and luckily I didn't die immediately. I had most of my bullets hit the wall, 
So I recede back in here with good life, watching behind me for him to cross the T fully. This is the advantage of having a teammate whenever you're running this position. If you have to fall back, your teammate can hold the angle. And while I'm metting up, good life does kill this player's scav. All right, so with about five and a half minutes left in the raid, we start looting everything. You can see that uh, on Good Life's side, he had quite a few bodies. <laughs> Definitely a much higher kill count than the previous raid. But as usual, whenever he gets a large amount of kills in his hallway, I'll stand out here in the middle to attract fire if anybody is to take a shot at us. Uh, they'll always see me first to try and shoot at me, and that'll give DK an opportunity to respond. All right, but this is a picture-perfect example of what these raids are supposed to look like. You're supposed to have a big stack of bodies just like this with all the pockets of backpacks you could need to look through and find you some rare items, find you some keys or key cards, and you can even find these 3M white armors for the skier and the therapist quests. It's it's very convenient way to gather loot and gather XP from the kills. One thing you'll definitely want to do whenever you're running these types of raids is carry plenty of ammo for your primary. It doesn't have to be the best. I mean, we carried the best because it's late wipe when we do this. So we, you know, we're anticipating heavily geared players possibly spawning in a hallway that we'd have to clear out before we could get to the scavs. But you can definitely do this kind of run with. Mid-tier, low-tier ammo doesn't matter. I've done it with I've done it with hollow points before. It's perfectly viable. You're just trying to kill the scavs. Alrighty, so in this particular raid, I will show you how I hold L hallway while Good Life will be holding the position. I've been holding box. We do swap places from time to time just so we could stay fresh and not you know get rusty, get tired, bored with this particular hold. But we spawn in. I don't know if this is gate 1 or gate 2 or what the name of this position is, but we spawn where we could potentially be contested by somebody from Forklift or somebody then in this hallway again. So we proceed down here with absolutely no caution or respect for the possibility that we may be domed at any moment until we finally get to this corner. And nobody's down here, luckily for us. So we move into the position and lock it down. Anyone? I can't clear L, but I've got box. Going L. L is empty. All the way back. Now the whole time I'm holding this angle, I'm listening for two major audio cues. The sound of scavs walking around in the hallway, and the sound of the scavs walking down the stairs, the metal stairs that get down to this oil pit. There's two sets of stairs. They both make essentially the same noise. And it's really the only sounds you have to watch out for, besides the sound of somebody jumping and landing in the pit. If you hear somebody landing, it's a possibility that they jumped over the fence. Alright, so here you see a couple AI scavs that I allowed to get close to me. This makes it easier to loot them. I can actually loot these scavs fairly quickly and easily because I allowed them to get so close. I do not have to worry about somebody sitting up on the first floor level looking down into the tunnel. Not as much as I normally would, anyways, because they're so deep in the tunnel that I can actually loot them without exposing myself at all to that angle. Alright, we wait till late in the raid, about 8 minutes till after we've heard nobody walking around and no gunfire for quite a while, we begin to safely loot. If you don't find any super rare items like the key cards or the keys or the graphics cards, I simply suggest stacking your backpacks and going for either white pack of armor or attachments like the flashlights for the shotguns, those sell pretty well. Or just anything you think you might use, obviously, like, you know, the, the 8R that I grabbed. Understand the fact that this may not be a fantastically lucrative uh, raid every time. Obviously, you may not may not even survive to see the end of the raid. This is Tarkov, after all, so just try this position out, hold this angle, do your best, see what it gets you. It can be very, very profitable. Alright, so I hope I was able to adequately show how safe-ish... For Tarkov and how profitable this angle is for you to hold. You can hold the L hallway solo or if you've got two players you can put one in box and one in L hallway. It is a great way to rack up kills and if you've got a mission to do where you've got to kill PMCs within a certain distance or with a trimmer or you know with a certain weapon or whatever. The office area is very commonly used for that purpose but I find it easier albeit slightly slower paced but it's easier to get those missions done if you hold that angle. To summarize, the three things that I would say that you've got to do to make this successful is wait until the last minute to loot 
unless they are just sitting there in the box or in the hallway with you because you do not want to overexpose yourself because you're going to be spending a lot of time in factory. You're going to be spending the entire raid waiting until the end to collect as many kills and as much loot as possible. And the last thing you want to do is sit there in factory for 20 minutes only to get killed by some dude camping off somewhere else being a rat like yourself and lose all of that stuff that you worked so hard to accumulate. So that's number one. Number two is carry as much ammo as you can feasibly carry with you in your gamma, in your pockets, whatever, depending on obviously the price of the ammo. But do carry lots of ammo with you because you're generally not going to be able to just stop in the middle of the raid and go and grab a gun with some ammo from some other scav down the hallway or some other player. Uh, it's gener generally not going to be able to safely do that. So carry plenty of it with you in your rig, and whenever you need to, whenever you've got a safe minute that you can repack your mags, do that. And the third and final thing I'll say about this is do not ever use the Gate 3 Extract. It is a death trap. I'm playing in point twelve when basically everybody sits in Gate 3 in Factory. It is just not going to be an option don't ever risk it. Get the factory key. Get to Sellers. It's right there. Sellers is literally right there, down there with you, just down the hallway in box. Use that extract. Do not use Gate 3. Because although I am a rat, and although I am the campy dude, I do not condone extract camping. Nikita is looking down for BSG heaven on you with sheer disappointment in his eyes. So please, for the love of Killa, stay safe. Use one of the other two extracts. The factory key's not that expensive. Come on, you're gonna make so much of it back by doing this run. Uh, hopefully the next video, I'll be able to show you my shoreline camping position where I hold the filling station that is just down the hill from the shoreline resort. It is a very good hold. You can get lots of PMC kills, especially in this position. And if you need the Mosin kills for Jaeger, the, the Tarkov shooter missions, you know, that is a good position for that. I'll be joined by Good Life TV again, and we'll show you how to duo this position. If you want to watch the video, then turn on notifications so that you see exactly whenever it comes out, because I don't know how soon it's going to be. It may be tomorrow. It may not be for a week. My work schedule right now is uh, <clears throat> it's pretty constricting, so I'm doing this as fast as I can, and... I'll work as fast as I can on this, but I'm not making any promises of when it'll be out. So thank you so much for watching. I've got two other video games that I have played that will be in a playlist in the description. Ashen Forest and Tanky Online. Two little small indie games. Uh, probably not something you're interested in if you play Tower Cobb, but they're there. And I've got videos of cats and dogs and seagulls and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs>